Okay, let's address the stalker in the room. I get it. You see the gas masks, and the horror, and the Chernobyl setting, and the cobbler in the thumbnail, and you think, ah, yes. Okay, this is like Stalker. I mean, when the studio behind Chernobylite offered to send me a review code, they mentioned Stalker in the first sentence. You weren't supposed to do that! Here's the fact of the matter. If I were to say that Chernobylite is like Stalker, but blank, and just reviewed the game through that lens, then I would be sending it to the electric chair. Reviewers are far too cavalier about saying stuff like that. Like how they always say the infamous, this game is the Dark Souls of blank, if a game is hard. Because, as we all know, Dark Souls invented the concept of death. Dark Souls is hard, but that is not what made it a phenomenon. It is not the defining characteristic, even, of what those games were. Dark Souls is intricately laid out and filled with environmental storytelling, and the combat is punishing yet engaging and rewarding and visceral, and the entire world is permeated with a sense of tragedy that makes the player feel as if they're crawling through the innards of the rotting corpse of a once grand beast. What makes Dark Souls special is not that it fucks the player sideways. What makes it special is the fact that it and its successors <clears throat> were designed with the precision and attention to detail of a fine Italian sports car. Saying a hard game is like Dark Souls but blank is like a car reviewer saying, oh, this car is like a Ferrari, but a Kia, because they both have wheels. You're making the driving experience of said Kia infinitely worse for the consumer because they, in the back of their mind, will just be thinking, wow, this is way worse than a Ferrari which is totally a reasonable thing to expect because a so-called industry expert told me the two are at all comparable. Don't buy Chernobylite because it takes place in the Chernobyl exclusion zone and has dudes walking around with gas masks on. These are surface level things and when you compare this game to Stalker, it actually falls apart. A prominent mechanic in the Stalker games is artifact hunting. This is present in all of the games, but it was done best in Call of Pripyat, so I'm going to talk about how they did it there. The artifacts exist near anomalies, which are dangerous when wrong step can kill you, and much like how you can toss out Funko Pops to detect virgins in real life, you toss out bolts to detect the otherwise hard-to-spot anomalies. The artifacts themselves are invisible until you're very close to them, and when you find one, you can sell it or use it yourself. Stalkers live in the zone so they can collect and sell these artifacts, which give the holder of them abilities that some would consider unnatural. This mechanic is interesting, yes, but it has a point within the greater context of the game. It is a mechanic that makes the player feel small and vulnerable and even confused by the setting. The world of Stalker will not just kill you, it will kill you in exceedingly obtuse and violent ways. It is a mechanic that establishes the player and his fellow stalkers place within the zone, that place being the bottom. It is a mechanic that makes the setting and narrative more engaging. In Chernobylite, you build a base. You manage resources, you gather a cast of characters who assist you in your quest to find your wife, uh, you keep them all healthy and well-fed, you level various skills up through them. The gameplay loop consists of sending your companions and yourself on missions daily, coming back at the end of the day, dispersing food rations, doing some light interior decorating with whatever junk you found on your mission, and then starting the next day. Chernobylite is mechanically much more like Fallout 4 than it is any of the Stalker games. Although, unlike Fallout 4, the base building and NPC management is very integral to what the game is about, and wasn't just stapled onto the game last minute after Todd realized the story in his RPG was about as engaging as reading the backstory to some ten-year-old Sonic original character. Unlike my Sonic original character, who is very cool, this is Zack Inferno. He has fire powers, and can run even faster than Sonic. Chernobylite is a base management and survival game, and the player's power is inexorably tied to the health of the people you manage. And whether or not you've built a TV so they can watch their stories, he has a 7-inch penis. Uncircumcised. You can only level up through these NPCs if they're healthy and well-fed. And you don't just hit the level up button, but instead actually go out in the field and go through a training exercise with them. This is nice. I like this. Makes them feel more like actual people, as opposed to skill point vending machines. Ah! 
Red Dead Redemption 2 also had something of a base management system itself, and like most mechanics in that game, it felt tacked on. Having something like what Chernobylite does, which is to say, managing your NPC's health and sending them out on missions and unlocking abilities through them, would have been outstanding. The strongest part of the game for me, undoubtedly, was just how goddamn likable and interesting every member of the Vanderlind gang was. From Sadie's tragic backstory to the charismatic mask of Dutch, to Uncle's inspiring journey of overcoming his lumbago. The characters of Red Dead Redemption 2 engage like no other, save for possibly Dancing with Anime Girls VR. So a system that had you interacting with them, similar to what is in Chernobylite, would have been welcome, would have made that game great. The reason I'm bringing all this up is the system in Chernobylite is fine mechanically, but it's let down by the actual NPCs you're managing. They have personalities, yes, but they're all just sort of crazy and quirky, you know, manic pixie dream stalkers. Now I've been railing this game pretty hard, but that's only because I fucking hated my first five or so hours with it. The base building was not fun, the art direction was not interesting, and what draws me to Stalker is its expertly crafted cosmic horror. Whereas Chernobylite relies on cheap jump scares and, like, laughing dolls that glow green, like, that's the level we're operating at here. Although Chernobylite, according to the marketing material I was sent, is not cosmic horror, it's actually nuclear horror. That is not a thing that exists. When Chernobylite is trying to be stalker, it's laughable. Chernobylite puts its worst foot forward, but it's got a thick narrative ass which will follow it if you give it time. That sentence most likely makes no sense to anyone but me, but that's because I'm mentally unhinged and I'm still buying GameStop shares. The story of Chernobylite is persistent. In that, the fail state is not going back to a checkpoint. You instead get captured and lose an item or two, and the story continues. Your failure just becomes another part of the story that is your playthrough as you escape and live to die another day. I've talked about the systemic and mechanic-driven approach to video game storytelling before, where there's more so a rule book than there is a conventional story, and that's sort of what Chernobylite is doing. Getting captured, if you're bad at games, and die a lot, can begin to feel... goofy. Because, you know, while you're looking for the items they took from you, you always overhear this conversation. Man, it sure would suck if that prisoner escaped, and he found all his old items that we put in that big tent. You know, the white tent, not the green ones. The tent labeled confiscated shit. Dimitri, we've talked about this. You're talking through me. Not to me. <laughs> it, it, it sure would suck if someone hacked into our servers in order to reduce our presence in future missions. Dimitri, we've been going to counseling for three months now, and you still don't listen to me. I'm willing to make this work if you are, but I want a partner. Not a generic thug, dispensing cliched, expository dialogue. This is who I am, Dale! The strength of Chernobylite lies not exactly in the story itself, but more so in how flexible it is. It's filled with decisions that matter more than they may seem on the surface. And while I could understand why the game would not advertise itself with the generic blurb of your decisions have consequences, because that sentence gives me, personally, PTSD flashbacks. Your decisions do have consequences, and the game has a lot of, oh wow, I did not expect that to bite me in the ass moments. You can even, at rare opportunities, go back and change your decisions, which is basically legitimized save scumming. You need to expend the titular Chernobylite resource in order to change these decisions, which is, by the way, just slightly less dumb of a name for a fictional material than Transformium. That's what we're calling it. Kill me. Now, normally, when I say a game does something, I will provide an example. Or at least bring up Doom Eternal. In this case, I would bring up a choice that had interesting consequences that came back to haunt me or help me. But I'm not gonna do that. That would ruin the fun for you, viewer, because believe it or not, I may end up recommending Chernobylite at the end of all of this. One of the things you manage for both NPCs and yourself is mental state. You play as a nuclear physicist named Igor, so this whole hiding in bushes and stabbing people thing is pretty rough on the whole mental health front. 
because he's a dumb science nerd. The stress of combat reduces his mental state, although that basically just manifests itself in having the edges of the screen get all dark. What could they have done instead of that, though, when your mental state declines? I mean, I don't know, make you join Twitter, I guess? The existence of this mechanic pushes the player to feed their own character and the others more than needed to just keep them breathing, because apparently, feeding someone just enough to keep them alive can be mentally taxing. At least, that's what my whore of an ex-wife argued in the custody battle. That bitch. I've said it before, I'll say it again. Starvation builds character, Deborah. This mechanic also pushes you to build more comfortable accommodations for you and your companions. This is a simple mechanic, but I like it quite a bit, as it fits in really well within the context of the game and can make the circumstances surrounding you feel more dire than they would otherwise. It also adds some weight to the plot, as it naturally makes Igor's journey feel like it's actually mentally affecting him in a significant way. That gives me an idea. Hey! Hey! What? Uh, what? Uh, who let you into my alley? It's an alley. I just walked past all the masturbating homeless people. Listen, do you still care about using Far Cry to do the whole gaze not into the abyss thing? You know, the whole apocalypse now, hearts of darkness thing? What are you talking about? I never did that. That is, quite literally, all that Far Cry used to be about. Uh, I'm pretty sure you just made that up. I don't know why I'm trying to convince you. Just, if you ever return to that whole thing, because charismatic villains playing off of a protagonist that has no personality is incredibly boring and tedious to watch, maybe do a sanity mechanic or something. Might, you know, it could be a good idea. Oh, yeah. You know, I actually like that. Yeah. We can sell antipsychotic meds and loot boxes. At the end of the day, I'm surprised to say that I recommend Chernobylite. It has a hard time engaging from the start, as its presentation can feel pretty goofy at times, which is naturally weird considering it's set in the Chernobyl exclusion zone. I mean, the protagonist is wearing eyeliner. But the weight it gives player choices and just the all-around flexibility of the narrative makes it surprisingly compelling. If you're looking for Stalker, look elsewhere. I'd personally recommend Stalker. What Chernobylite is, is good. A solid execution of a flexible story that reacts to player choice blended with some decent base building and NPC management. But if you focus on what Chernobylite could be, then you may just miss what it is.